it drove once. I drove in this thing one time when I was a kid, when we took it from my grandfather's house in uh, Gilbert at the time, he was living in Gilbert and tr took it over to South Phoenix to store it. It drove there and for whatever reason, I don't remember what it was, something dumb, carburetor, something simple. It caused it to sit over the years and from that point on, it just sat in the yard in the back. Um, you know, nobody, nobody, you know, took advantage of the truck. It just kind of sat with everybody thinking one day we'd get around to restoring it. My grandfather got this truck new, uh, 1948. He had it over his whole life. Uh, I inherited this thing when I was 13 years old. Had it for 20 years, going from yard to yard. Uh, finally decided it was time to restore it and got it over to a shop and dealt with all the worst case scenarios you can deal with when you go to a shop. People just kind of over promised under deliver you know I thought I thought it was going in the right direction right body work looked to me like it was in good shape and I bought a, a fat man chassis I believe that's what it was and the shop had did a really botched job of trying to see notch it and make it work for this particular truck being it being that it's a long bed and I thought you know everything was good and I got to Jeremy and he was you know in the nicest way possible told me that I had to start from scratch and you got to break eggs and make an omelet. I basically told Brandon, um, we have to start over. You know, I mean, the chassis is one of the most ex most important things on a build. Like they say with houses, it's your foundation. The foundation is the most important thing. You build a house on a strong foundation. So you don't want to build a really nice truck on a terrible foundation. So um, talked to Brandon about it. We ended up deciding that we needed to order a brand new chassis for it. He kind of gave us free reign on some of the stuff that we wanted to do. So. Called up Roadster Shop, got a brand new chassis. Uh, eight weeks or so later, it showed up on the truck, and we drug it out of the the the, uh, the semi truck with Pyle's truck, I think. Hold on. There's that. So when I got it, I always had it in my head we were going to do some kind of two tone color scheme at some point, um, and then we got over there to Tray Five, and we kind of originally settled it on like a root beer solid color throughout the whole thing. Got with Frank at Eye Candy and he gave me some more bad news about the body work not being really great. So it was just a never ending bad story, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember why we went from a root beer exterior to a, a white exterior. I think part of the reason was we started this build right before SEMA. I think we brought in the build right before SEMA the previous year and, um, and Brad, had just brought a root beer colored carryall, same body style, but a root beer colored root beer colored carryall suburban, whatever you want to call it, to SEMA that was root beer on the bottom three quarters, like the belt line down, and then white on the top, which is one of the ideas we were thinking about, was two toning it like that. Um, so that kind of, that's kind of when it changed to like maybe we should just do a solid color. We already had a pearl white in mind to do the interior, so it was kind of like what do you think about flopping it and. And he liked the idea and I think it turned out for the better. I'm really happy with it. I think it turned out great. Um, I stopped by every couple months checking on it and the progress is quick and fast and everything was looking really good. They got good guys over there. So I felt pretty confident right out the gate, you know. I didn't have any any issues. I saw it torn apart, saw it go back together pretty quick. They were pretty open and honest and reached out to me and kept open line of communication, all that kind of good stuff throughout the whole build, so. So this is probably one of my favorite builds. I mean, I've, I've got some favorites for sure. This one's up there. Um, Brandon's a really great customer to work for. Um, we're already building another one. We're building a 64 Suburban for him this year. So obviously I, it's, it's nice to know that you did your job well and took care of a customer if he's already ready to go on the next one, you know, within a month of completing one. And hell, we're not even done with the next one, the Suburban. And he's already talking about the one after that. So the customer makes the build for us too. I mean, like I said previously, this is one of my favorite body styles, but it's also nice when you get to a customer that'll kind of want to hear you out and want to do what you think is, is nice and cool and will help, you know, improve the looks of the vehicle, improve the functionality of the vehicle. The truck is a long bed, which people barely even notice. I mean, people pick up on it occasionally, but it just, it's a little bit longer than stock. We built the running boards for it. They lay flat on the ground. It's just, it's smooth, it's clean, it's simple. It's exactly the way that I like to do these builds. But the main reason really that I wanted to get around to restore this thing is when we were kids, we lived right off of Central Avenue. And Central Avenue at the time, back in late 80s, early 90s, it was a big 
low, the lowrider culture was huge. So, you know, Saturday, Sunday nights, there was cars up and down Central, and we had like a front row view of this. And at the time, the truck was parked right on Central, and me and my cousin would sit in the truck, and we'd act like we were, you know, little kids, act like we are cruising this old truck down Central, you know, having a fun time playing make-believe and all that kind of stuff. So it's just cool to see it now to be capable of being one of those trucks that could be, you know, show quality and all that kind of good stuff where you really could feel like you're, you know, cruising central. I don't even know if you can still do that anymore, if that's even possible, but I've checked that off my bucket list and got this thing kind of completed. And it was a big goal of mine I had ever since I was a kid. To, you know, it was always a dream to just restore the old truck and have something that I could pass down to my boys one day. So it was just kind of cool to just complete a dream, you know, anytime you have something that's like a big task like that, it's kind of it's something that, that I can never complete on my own. So it's almost like you got to put together a team to make it happen. But it feels good to find the crew that was able to see it, you know, at, through to the end and make it is make it what it is today. You know, it just feels good to see it done and see the whole thing come full circle. Well, to be honest, it's kind of a piece of sh**. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>